Graduate Management Admission Council of America, which conducts the most premier B-School entrance exam in the world called GMAT, has made its first ever acquisition of a test asset in the world by assuming ownership and management of NMAT, which is the entrance exam for NMIMS. We want to find out what is the strategy behind this, what is the future, what is the future of management education in India and of NMIMS. And who better to answer all these questions than the Vice Chancellor of NMIMS Team to Be University, Dr. Rajan Saxena, who's here with us. Welcome, sir. Sir, first question is, what is NMIMS's strategy behind this decision? Well, one of the biggest reasons why we were really, why we decided on uh, moving in this direction was that we had been offering NMAT for the last five years and we had done it successfully. We had created a history in this country in the sense that we were perhaps one of the best known tests which was student friendly, which had all the features that GMAT was offering. But we realized also that after having conducted successfully and met for last five years and having grown over the last five years in terms of the number of applications as also in terms of the student satisfaction with the test we felt there is a need now to go global we also realize that when we go global we will have to invest a substantive amount of money in not just merely uh, conducting the test but even in terms of development of the test and the technology further the, the pace at which the technology was changing especially when it comes down to security we realized that NMIMS could not really cope up with that kind of an investment requirement and if we didn't really put in that kind of an investment then there was always a greater probability that at some point of our time or another we would run into a difficulty or some bottlenecks in some respect or the other the the development of the test inventory itself is a specialized art unlike especially when it comes down to psychometrics or psychometric validated tests unfortunately when you look at the psychometrically validated test we don't have that, that kind of an expertise very commonly available in this country. So we have to be dependent on the expertise available in the world market, in which case against your cost, cost goes up. So looking at all this, we felt that, well, this was a time when we need to look beyond. There's another reason behind it. We wanted to explore other geographies. We wanted to offer the test in other geographies too. By our own selves, we couldn't have done it because that would have meant uh, me having to invest in technology, test centers, and other logistics. All this was not something that we could have done. One of the important facets of globalization of an institution today is that if you are able to globalize your processes, that will enable you to bring in people from the world market into your campus. Not only that you'll be able to bring in people from the world market, you'll be able to export to the world market your thought process itself and your ideas. So with it, it was with that kind of a perspective, we said that one process that we need to globalize is our admission test process. So with that kind of a perspective, we were looking for somebody who could really do it well and who better than and GMAT. who could be the better than GMAC who are the world leaders and perhaps the only agency and the only organization that has so far successfully conducted the management admission tests in the world for almost about more than about eight decades or so. So what impact will the, this NMAT by, uh, by GMAC will have on students who want to apply? Well, the students who would be applying will have more opportunities or more doors and more windows of opportunities. Until now, the test score was only for NMIMS. Today, 
there are other universities also and institutions about 12 have joined in over a period of time this number is going to grow in any case the perspective is to really make NMED by GMAC as one of the test in India and in South Asia for admission to management uh, programs if that happens then well clearly they would have a whole lot of number of schools whose doors will get open to with just one test score secondly I think as the test gets accepted in different geographies the Indian student would have an opportunity to apply to business schools in different geographies who would be accepting and met by GMAT. So this is a very major kind of a benefit that a student would have. And clearly the test price is a highly competitive test price uh, compared to others in the same it's not very expensive it's not at very all. expensive yeah. so any student who wishes to study at NMIMS would he or she need to apply to NMIMS separately over and above appearing for NMAT by GMAC yes that's a kind of a requirement because uh, there are we need to understand that these are two different processes yes one is an application to the institution the other is an application to the test so NMAT by GMAC is only a test. Yes. If they don't apply to NMIMS and they only apply to NMAT by GMAC, then in that case that the test score would have no kind of a meaning to us because it will never get reported to us. Yes. So in a way, it is in the interest of the student to ensure that the application is at both the places, the NMIMS and NMAT by GMAC. So they have to absolutely make sure to apply to NMIMS absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And so how many other different colleges come under the ambit of NMAT by GMAC? There are about 12 colleges. There are 12 universities that are there in this. And what's the plan going forward? Plan going forward is to make this test as the, the test for the country. Right. So obviously, uh, more number of institutions are likely to join in. I believe that the NMET executives have uh, been meeting the Ministry of HRD and uh, other officials you know, in the regulatory regime as also in the business schools trying to market this test. If everything goes well, we hope to really have a, a larger okay. number, a very big uh, pool of business schools of all categories coming into the play. So one question that comes to mind is, why has GMAT come into India? <laughs> well, ideally that should be answered by the GMAC only. But nonetheless, since I am on their board, so I can respond from whatever I know of the president's mind right. there. I think uh, there are two reasons for this. First and the foremost is the opportunity that exists in India. The demographic advantage that this country has today mm. makes it one of the most attractive destinations for education institutions and all the service providers and other allied forces, allied services mm. that are contributing to the education industry, which includes obviously the testing also. So GMAC, for GMAC it looked a very obvious choice to really get into the India market, which contributes today to a fairly substantive numbers. If you look at the number of students going outside India, there are fairly substantive numbers that are going. So they wanted to have an operation, a test for India. The second reason I think which is there is the GMAT by itself is a very expensive test. Yes. They wanted to have another test which was of a lower price but had the same features and the quality which GMAT was offering worldwide and we were the best obviously we our test and met was had everything that GMAT offers at the world level so it was a natural choice for them to come and shake hands with us so they looked around and found NMAT to be the best partner. that's it so they found it to be the best they found it as one of the most competitive test and something which really had the same philosophy same values and the two institutions also shared 
the same dream. Right. And similarly so successful. And similarly successful. Sir, what is the future of NMAT by GMAC in India? Well, you should look at the any admission test and the management education today. Yeah. One of the most important kind of a requirement today is that of diversity, diversity in the class. Increasingly, over a period of time, we, I have seen, and we have all seen it, and this is, a, this is an issue that is being discussed and debated across the world, that the diversity in the MBA class is today very much reduced. In the context of India, if you look at it, the largest number in the class consists of engineers. That's the number of girls in the, in, the, in the program are limited to about 18%, 19%, 11%, 12%. That is the kind of a percentage which is there. Because the pool has not been such a big one of the girls taking the management admission test. Fortunately, in the context of NMAT, and I go back into the historical bit to be able to connect it to the future itself. Fortunately for us in NMAT, this diversity was never a problem. Because we had the gender diversity, almost about 38 to 39% of the students were girl yes. students. And that is the reason why NMIMS today this year took an admission, took a conscious decision that from this year onwards we are going to keep 30% of the seats in the MBA program only for the women. That's wonderful. So we already had the gender diversity. Two, if you look at it from the point of view of the education streams, we had students coming from engineering, humanities, social sciences, medical sciences, and other streams. So from the education point of view also, we had that. Work experience, again, people with, with work experience and without work experience. Then it wasn't just merely limited to Western India, where the students from all over the country. So the geographical diversity was there, the, the work experience diversity was there, gender the diversity. gender diversity and education diversity. Given all this kind of a situation now, clearly the future is in terms of increasing this diversity. And today there is a need to not just merely bring a geographical diversity within the country, but also bring the global kind of people also or the world itself into this test. When we are able to do that, truly speaking what we would have are is a multi-ethnic kind of an admission test. When multi-ethnicity comes into the, into the test and into the classroom, I believe that the value of a discussion in the classroom becomes much more to a student and also to the That's teacher. So from one point of view, the future is in terms of more diversity because the test is going to be offered across the various geographies. Two, the future is that when it is offered in different geographies, more business schools in those geographies will start accepting the test. And when they start accepting the test, they would have their own students also writing this test. And therefore, this test is likely to emerge as a national benchmark in those respective geographies where no such kind of a benchmark today exists. Within India, we do hope that uh, we should be, and met by GMAC, should be alongside with CAT, should be the next test that is available for this country. And the largest number of management students should be writing for should this admission test. So, so from what you say, I gather that for international students trying, wanting to study in India, this would become the test to take. We, we, that's what we want, that's what we are saying. But that is not to say that the GMAT would still not be available. GMAT would still be available. Right. That is not to say that the GMAT would not be there. So those markets where the, the, the price sensitivity. Yes. You know. South Asia. Southeast South, Asia, yeah. South Asia, uh, Africa. Yes. Eastern Europe, right? These are the Central Europe, yes. you know, these are the markets, Latin America, these are the geographies where we do hope 
that as, as we go forward in the next 10 to 15 years, this should really become the test in the world market and alongside with the GMAT. GMAT. So GMAT and NMAT should be there. And, and it seems like NMAT by GMAT will almost internationalize management education in India. That's right. That's right. They, 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 they will globalize the management education experience in India itself. Yes. Sir, as the Vice Chancellor of NMIMS, you have done such a big collaboration. That's really a big credit. Now, what about NMIMS? What plans do you have for it? Strategy of NMIMS team to be university growing, going forward, future plans? Well, as I said, there are right in the beginning that uh, for globalization today, one doesn't have to only go by setting up a campus. That is one approach. The other approach is to really start globalizing the processes. And the third is to create a global identity for your own schools itself. Well, the most important thing that we are wanting to do, or, or these are the two important things that we are wanting to do. We want to globalize the processes. We want to globalize our schools. So what is it? Create a global image and a global brand for our schools and the university. From that kind of a perspective, I think uh, going forward, uh, most important thing would be to really look at it from the point of view of the global accreditations yes. for all our programs and business and, and schools. Uh, Bangalore and is already EMBA accredited. Hyderabad is on the way. So is with the, regard to the uh, LMIMS business school, the main school at Mumbai, which we do hope that by 2016 and we should be able to get a global accreditation for our programs itself, which should be one of the best known global accreditations in the world itself. Uh, the same story holds good with engineering, the same holds, thing, holds good with our sciences and other programs, etc. The second part of it is relating to the global uh, faculty scholarship at the global level. Our perspective is that our faculty work should be visible in the world market itself. And how do we do that? Journals, our own journals, that's one. The other is we are actually encouraging today our faculty to publish in journals which are internationally well known and are of a high reputation. We are also encouraging them to file for patents in the world market itself. So therefore, Plus, at the same time, we are in discussions with one of the foreign universities, which is one of the top 100, uh, ranked among the top 100, to partner with us in, with regard to faculty competency development, faculty scholarship at the world level, and at the same time, in terms of globalizing our academic and examination process, academic and research processes. We would also be geographically be expanding because we see the opportunity. New campuses. Uh, yes, so the new campuses are, are, are being developed. New Bombay is an area where there is a very big population out over there. We may not necessarily go only for the, for the full-time program, but there is a great need to, to do something different over there. Uh, like an executive programs, or for that matter, let us say some long drawn international programs, etc., is something that we will try and explore that. We are, we are developing our campuses at Indore, Chandigarh, Ahmedabad, and uh, we are in discussions with several state governments who have been approaching us. Our biggest kind of a constraint, if at all, is going to be it is not, will, will never be the vision will never be the ideas, but it will always be the speed at which the regulator approves our campuses. So with that kind of a perspective, uh, I believe that uh, for Erebimus, the future is certainly bright. I do hope that uh, as the time goes by, in the next uh, 10 years time period, Erebimus as a university is a globally admired and appreciated university and respected for its innovations, its faculty scholarship, 
and the contribution that the students make to the society. Thank you, sir. That's a wonderful thought and all the best to NMIMS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.